Hey everybody, welcome to episode two of What We Watch in the Shadows podcast. What is up everybody? Welcome to uh, the second episode of what was supposed to be a consistent podcasting uh, process, filming, and um, yeah, dropped the ball a little bit. Um about a five week delay here, I want to say since the last or the first episode I did, but it's not the point. I'm doing one now. Uh, things come up, you know, just not going to make excuses. I'll, I'll, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to do better. But nevertheless, guys, um, this week's episode, um, I, you know, these podcasts, I wanted to make sure there's kind of a central, sorry, my nose itches, uh, a central theme to uh, this whole the the three movies that I pick out and I watch and I talk about here. And last week, or not last week, five weeks. Five weeks ago last week uh episode you know was horror themed so i thought okay i kind of was trying to pick through the movies i'm trying to go through and watch here and see what are you know kind of similar movies and i thought with these they kind of had that similar you know sense of genre to a certain degree um and i kind of where i started to review my notes i was like okay they're all of um kind of lower budget movies to hollywood standards like the lowest or the highest budget on this of these three movies is 25 million dollars so which I know to you and I, it seems like a lot of money, but to most Hollywood studios, it's like 50 million, like the minimum, it seems like these days, or 100, 150, 300, whatever it may be, million dollar movies. Um, so I guess it's kind of a low budget uh, action thriller uh, movies, and do they hold up still to a 100 to 150 million dollar movie? Um, let me know in the comments below if you've seen any of these movies. Uh, the three that we're going to talk about here is The Grey with Liam Neeson, uh, Rescue Dawn with Christian Bell. I had to pause there for a second. I couldn't even remember. Um, and then Maggie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. So, again, these all have kind of a wide range of variety and budgets, too. So, I kind of know from my notes here. So, it'll be kind of interesting to go through each of them and let me know again what you guys think of these movies. Um, so, first one to go through is The Grey. So a couple notes or facts about it. Uh, it came out January 27th of 2011 on a budget of $25 million. Uh, made a box office of $81.2 million, so did pretty good. About almost tripled its money there. Um, or, yeah, almost quadrupled. Uh, Rotten Tomato score of 79%. That's a pretty good score there. The uh, overall premise of The Grey is Liam Neeson plays this like hired marksman, uh, kind of just, it's a, based up in Alaska and he's like this hired marksman for like almost like warehouses or facilities and stuff or workers. And they deal with a lot of wildlife issues up there clearly with like, you know, wolves, bears, whatever it may be. So he's just there to kind of watch over them, protect them. And that's kind of his thing. And, um, you know, he kind of works up there and then he gets hired or he's going apart with this crew on a plane to another job and the plane crashes. Um, and then, of course, all hell breaks loose after that. So uh, the that's kind of where then they kind of have to deal with the survival of in the wild and that sort of thing. And uh, he, you know, you, you're limited supplies. You're dealing with the weather conditions in Alaska and also you're dealing with the wildlife of the these wolves that are, you know, living in their area. And you're, they're in the wolves' territory now, so they're not in their fancy facilities where they can kind of watch around and over them and perches and stuff and catch these wolves off guard. Um, the wolves are watching them to a certain degree now. Um, but the movie overall, um, some interesting notes, I guess I just kind of from – so my I'll go with my, my experience with this movie. So I did see it when it first came out in theaters when I used to work at the theater back in the day. Uh, I was really hyped for it. And – when I, it's funny because I think it's still um, on my Facebook. Those like on this day things you see or whatever. And it was like, uh, I wrote like the gray fantastic film up to last 20 seconds of the movie or whatever it is. And I was just like disappointed or whatever. And I watched it again this time thinking, okay, let me just I'm gonna go and watch it a second time. Let's see how I feel about it. And I understand from like a, a filmmaking, a storytelling point but I was still disappointed. I don't know why. And I'm not going to give spoilers away, but you have this so much hype to this ending. And then it just kind of, you know, the way it ends, I was just like, that's, that's, that's it, I guess. All right. Well, time to go. Um, get my popcorn. And leave. Um, I don't know. That's just my take. Let me know in the comments. Like I said, if you guys have seen it, what you guys think of it. 
Um, some interesting notes that I read up on it is that like, so Bradley Cooper, I guess was originally casted to be Liam Neeson. Didn't really see much on why he dropped from it, but he was originally casted to be in it. Uh, funny enough, you know, fun fact, they were both in, you know, uh, uh, a team just a year prior in 2010. So it's kind of interesting. Um, and then, I mean, the one thing too, is, is crazy. So they, you, you wonder how these movies nowadays, again, with CGI and all that stuff. So a $25 million movie, you think, okay, they could afford a lot of CGI and stuff like that. This is like zero CGI almost, not zero, but like little to none other than I'm clearly, you can tell the wolves are CGI, but like the scenery, the shooting, they shot everything, I guess, on location. Um, so like stuff like the weather conditions, it being minus 40 degrees Celsius while they were filming this is like crazy. That was real. So it kind of gave the authentication you could tell by the way they're, you know, they're breathing difficulty and they're struggling to keep warm and all this stuff. Like you can clearly tell like it was real. So um, some impressive stuff. And just, I don't know, Alaska is such a beautiful state. So all these scenery shots and everything they do and fillers and stuff like that, really impressive looking, really well done. Um, but besides, like I said, the just the wolves part and like the, the, the glow, they got like glowing eyes I noticed in there. I was like, it was almost that supernatural type feel to it that kind of threw me off a little bit. I mean, I don't see wolves in the wild really around Arizona here, but I don't think they are eyeballs glow in the dark. But, I mean, let me know if you guys think of know something else out there. I don't know about wolves, and I guess that's um, that's my whole thing. But um, besides that, besides the ending, I still think it was a really good movie. I still give it like an 8 out of 10. Like I said, that those two points I'm literally knocking on just by the ending because I personally felt disappointed by it, but that's just me. Um I feel like if it wasn't for that ending, I'd probably give it a 10 out of 10. Like it's really well done. The acting is outstanding and overall just, you know, it's, it's worth a watch. I'll say that it's definitely worth the watch. So that was the gray next two. I have never seen before. So that's my roll out my experience level with those movies. Uh, both strictly picked up a Blu-ray to watch for the first time. Uh, so the first one we'll get into is called rescue Dawn with Christian Bale. Uh, the facts on this movie, uh, released in July 4th of 2007 on a $10 million budget. So we're going down in budgets here. Uh, box office flop, that's for sure, $7.2 million. Uh, Rotten Tomato score, though, 90%. Uh, I had friends that told me about this movie, too, and say how good it was. So um, I finally, and I, I've seen the, I've seen it before in stores everywhere. I just never really pulled the trigger to buy it until I started doing the whole thrift thing. And then finally got it and pulled it up, watched it. And it's a good movie. Um if you haven't seen Rescue Dawn, uh, it's Christian Bale plays this uh, like pilot, and he's uh, on a Navy base. He's he's really interested in just flying. Like he's a, he, you kind of tell by his character. He's like, I don't care about the. It's during Vietnam War too, obviously. That's got to tell. That's an important note. It's during Vietnam War, and um, it's based on a true story too. Uh, Christian Bale's character and some of the characters, I guess, but uh, he just wants to fly like he tells people that several times like i'm just here i don't care about the war really i just want to fly i'm enjoying this and like there's even a part like um before all hell breaks loose his he's just kind of enjoying the moment and they're like all right go 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 do your thing he's like all right and after he does this basically his plane crashes i uh, get shot down and then he becomes captured by like a vietnam uh military base or something like that and uh, basically he's tortured, he's captured, he's held hostage this whole time. He's basically put with uh, Steve Zahn's character and a bunch of other guys of, um, you know, all being locked up in this camp. And they don't really give you, like, a time frame. I mean, I don't want titles, you know, pop up day 47, day 92, like, sort of stuff. But clearly it's a long period of time because he starts in the movie with no facial hair, clean shaved. And then at the end he's got almost like a full beard. Um, his body transformation, too, from, like, you know, healthy to you know, bone, skin and bones almost. Uh, that's kind of where you kind of find, you know, it's him struggling through this process of being, you know, and trying to get out, you know, hopefully. Um, so that's kind of what the overall premise and story of the movie is. Some background notes on the filming of the movie. I guess Matt Damon was actually originally the choice for the lead role, but turned it down. And then Christian Bale was casted by it. And you got to think this is Christian Bale just barely out of, or, you know, coming out from Batman Begins. So his, you know, star level is still, kind of lower level um tier because it wasn't till batman begins and then finally like dark knight that you know he he kind of made it big or whatever and stuff like that so my computer screen with all my notes here turned off that's very rude of it <laughs> um so that was kind of fascinating and interesting to note that um you know matt damon originally be involved in this would have been kind of interesting to see if it's any different how it would have been movie wise um 
And according to actor Steve Zahn in the movie, cast and crew didn't have any trailers on set. Uh, uh, the actors also average lost weight between 30 to 50 pounds each for the movie. I know Christian Bale's character, he said they lost like 55 pounds uh, for this role. And they actually, what they did because of his uh, body transformation, because, you know, you start off healthy and then, you know, he loses the weight throughout the movie. They filmed the movie almost in like reverse continuity. So they filmed it near the end where he's like practically skin and bone. He's lost the 55 pounds till where he kind of gained the weight back while filming the movie. And then like, you know, to where the beginning is basically the last stuff that they're filming, um, where he's pretty much healthy, you know, he's gained all the weight back and stuff like that. So, and Bale's a nutcase with that stuff. If you guys know Christian Bale's like history with like weight loss, weight gain for his roles. I mean, you got movies like the machinist where he weighs like 80 pounds then he goes and plays, you know, uh, Vice, where he gains like 60, 70 pounds, 80 pounds, and then stuff like um, American Hustle, he gains the weight for that movie too even. Guy's dedicated, so I'll give him that. Um, but other than that, like, I don't think there was a whole, like, what was this other one here? Uh, it was filmed in reverse. Oh, yeah, we talked about that. Duh. So um, some notes on the movie itself. One thing I really did appreciate was – the look and the sound of it being like almost like a war type movie. Um, when we were watching it, my wife was on the couch with me watching it for a bit. And we were just like, you know, saying like, you know, the sound, it's so like monotone. It's not stereo. It's not, you know, loud and in your face. The look is very great. And she's like, it's like watching mash. And I'm like, I'm like trying to think of a war, re like relatable war uh, type movie or TV show or whatever. I can say, yeah, it's like so-and-so. And she nails it there. So, um, that's how it was. And I really like stuff like that. They kind of make you feel like that's the movie vibe you're going with here, even though it's 2007. I mean, HD is not really a thing at the time, but uh, they still kind of kept with the overall look and feel of it being a war type movie, um, you know, being Vietnam and all stuff like that. So um, I thought something like that was really interesting. One kind of funny thing that I noticed was like, um, there's a couple scenes where like Christian Bale, like, is screaming and yelling like really crazy like it was nuts and i'm all like his voice changes and if you guys know about this or if you watch a movie like let me know in the comments below if you do see that part but like there's two parts specifically where he kind of like yells and his like i don't know if it's just like i don't want to say he's a bad actor or anything like that but I'm like is he not realizing that when he did that or is he purposely making his voice sound like that because he all of a sudden like kind of has the British, I mean, he's British. So it's like his British accent almost comes out when he's yelling and going crazy about these two specific scenes. Um, I don't know. It kind of stuck out to me. I was kind of like, I got to jot a note down here. He's done it twice now. I thought it was crazy the first time. He did it a second time. Um, and the only thing too that was kind of funny was like they had two of the cast members from Lost in the same movie. Like it's just I don't know, stuff like that. I always think it's funny. It's like, oh, hey, so-and-so. Oh, and hey, and so-and-so. They were both in so-and-so together. Like it was um, the doctor slash scientist from the island on lost and then uh daniel faraday was one of the uh prisoners or captures of um with bale and Sta steve's on and the camp and all that stuff so but no rescue dawn a good solid flick um the acting is really good the look is very good the overall quality everything like that uh i don't think it's like the best greatest movie ever but it's definitely worth a watch um any any type of person i think would enjoy watching this movie um you know, whether you're into action movies or you know drama that sort of thing suspense because it definitely got a lot of different vibes to it so which is really good um and then last but certainly not least a more probably the most recent movie of all these here yeah the most recent is called maggie and first thing i noticed off this dvd here blu-ray that i bought at the at uh where did i buy it at? i bought a big lots uh, it is a English French cover back. So I don't know if you can see that there. It'll start to focus, but you got it in like French right here. Yeah. And French right there. And, um, in the back right here, it's got, uh, basically the translation, you know, in English and then French at the bottom. So <laughs> really random. Um, was not expecting that so but still played fine and everything like that i was a little worried at first when i saw that i was all like oh no did i get like a foreign like type movie that won't work in my player um but no everything about it works fine so that was awesome there oh and even inside actually if you look on the inside uh it's backwards so can't really probably see it too well but the slip cover here has it where you can flip it and the french should be first and then the english would be second so kind of interesting i never i mean i never really bought movies at big lots too much 
Uh, so don't know if that's just a common thing you see there, but anyways, um, Maggie, uh, again with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Abigail Breslin, uh, came out May 8th of 2015 on a $1.4 million budget. And we'll, we'll talk more about that and why we realize how cheap that is. Uh, box office just barely made its budget back on a $1.6 million. Rotten Tomatoes, 60%. So a little bit on the lower end, but you know what? Um, for the, I think the quality of it and everything like that, it's, I, I think that's kind of a little bit low bar. So Maggie is a zombie flick. Uh, basically, uh, Abigail Breslin, Maggie, uh, is infected with this virus that's going around and basically killing people off. Uh, but it's a zombie movie where they're trying to cure it, you know, treat it. So you basically aren't like, oh, you got the virus. You're going to turn into a zombie within 30 seconds. And that's the end of that. It's, uh, you know, they try to treat it and they're trying to cure you for it in the hospital, but you get to a certain level threshold that they're like, you're past due. You're, you're going to turn eventually at some point. And, you know, when he, they find that out about her, Arnold basically wants to bring her home and let her just be with her family and stuff while she, you know, has her final days, you know, with this virus. Um, you know, the doctors basically, you're not supposed to uh, release them, but Arnold kind of is the like local friend or whatever of some of the doctors. So they kind of say like, all right, well, just kind of sneak her out sort of thing. And they basically take her home. Um, but she doesn't want to go to that thing. She's like, no, I don't want to hurt you guys. I don't want to get you guys infected, that sort of thing. Um, but that's kind of the gist of the whole premise is just like her dealing with this slow transition of her eventually turning and dealing with the family of, you know, struggling with it. Um, Arnold's wife is not her birth mother. So you kind of have that factor in there. She's not, I mean, she's not, she doesn't care about Maggie, but she clearly is like, you know, Hey, we have these other, I forgot if it's like one or two younger children, um, that her and Arnold have together that they're like, you know, they, we don't want to scare them or whatever. So, but, uh, he's like, no, she's my daughter. I want her to be here with our kid, you know, everybody. So while she's still around, um, interesting, just kind of like, you know, premise of the zombie flick where it's not so much, you know, Oh, zombies are around. We're going to shoot and kill them all in the head. And that sort of thing. It's, it's almost like you're, they're humanizing zombies, which is definitely different tactic. And I kind of like that. Um, because it's like, you know, zombies aren't, you know, I know they're kind of like, like zombies are supposed to be scary. And it's a horror movie type thing, but, um, to kind of give them more of a humanized look is I feel like that kind of should be how our culture should intend for it. if something were to ever, <laughs> I don't think it will, but ever to happen like that, they, and it's kind of funny that it's similar to actually what was going on in current events now, because one of the things was like, is a, it's the opposite of what was happening in current events. But like in this movie, if you could tell that you were at the stage where basically you were done was your heightened sense of smell and currently you know in our current events it was you were losing your sense of taste and smell so in this case like in a movie like if you start to notice like wow like i can smell something like four miles away or whatever maybe or not four miles i'm probably exaggerating there but um then you knew like uh oh it's gonna happen like any second now like you're gonna turn so that was kind of just an interesting tactic and the fact that they were keeping them in hospitals you know and quarantining them trying to help them like they weren't just like you know Oh, zombies that turn and eat people and then we just kill them all off one by one and it's funny to watch like sort of thing it's like no it's kind of sad it's like you're trying to help people and take care of them so i did kind of like something like that it's kind of interesting um some of the background though of it was that like you know the reason i realized that the budget was so low because you think with arnold schwarzenegger movie you know how is the budget only 1.4 million dollars um, is he didn't even get paid for the movie. He took a $0 salary for it, I guess, because he loved the script so much. I was just like, that's, that's dedication there. I mean, I know he's, I'm sure he's got money, so he's not too concerned about money, but like, if you must really like something that you're like, I will do this for free. I mean, that's only like, I feel like it's one of the first times I've heard an actor do that. I mean, let me know in the comments if you heard of other stories like that, but I've never heard of an actor just saying, yeah, I'll, I like this movie a lot. I want to do it for free. You know, I've heard people want to produce them. Like they're like, yeah, I want to get this. You, know, you got a great script here. I want to produce it. So I'm going to be in as a producer and an actor and uh, probably going to take an actor cut, but I won't take a producer cut because I'm going to put in my money to it, that sort of thing. But I, you never know. Um, other than that, really didn't see a whole lot. Um, this was actually as low. Oh, this was Arnold's lowest budget uh, movie since the original Terminator. Um, which, you know, not surprising since I mean, he doesn't do a whole lot of movies anymore, but I'm sure most movies he does, or at least, you know, 15, $20 million movies at least. So, um, but that was kind of an interesting factor. I thought was there, um, other than that, yeah, not a whole lot of notes. 
Uh, other than, like I said, the Blu-ray casing and everything like that was kind of interesting. Yeah, the whole the humanizing of the anim- uh, zombies and stuff like that was really cool. The movie overall, I thought, was really well done. Arnold and Abigail are really good in it. The acting, like, I was really impressed by Arnold because you don't think Arnold is being this dramatic actor and, you know, delivering and stuff like that. And he holds his own in this movie. Um, you really take him seriously. You can really see the acting out of him, not like, you know, just, oh, I'm on the sort of jokes and, you know, memes out of that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, no, it was a really good flick. I really recommend this movie. At least it's at least worth a one time watch. Um, when I say you have to go out and buy it and like keep it and watch it over and over again, probably not. But I think just maybe out of like due to Arnold and stuff and his, you know, commit, you know, his contributions to the films industry, I think it's worth a watch because you should see just how good of an actor he can actually be. Because again, I, if you look at him in Terminators and movies and all these other things, he's not a good actor in those. Like he's just like monotone and straightforward. I mean, Conan the Barbarian, come on now. But in this, he can act and it's good. So, um, but yeah, that's this week's podcast, guys. So hopefully I do it next week. <laughs> uh, gonna try now. Gonna try to start watching some movies and get some uh, reviews up. And um, this is this week's episode. Again, these are my three of the uh, low-budget action thriller movies. Let me know what you guys think if you end up watching them later on. I'll see you guys next week, or I'll see you tomorrow for the next uh, two videos coming up. And then uh, until then, thank you for watching this one, supporting all my content. As always, take it easy. See ya.